So here are the four things that I recommend. Number one is to have at least $15,000 in cash or whatever is appropriate to you, but I'd say up to $15,000. More than that is really not useful. The idea behind that is the following. Number one, you know that I'm a minimalist. I promote living like an assassin, which means that no matter where you go in this world, you should pretty much have everything that you need to thrive. When I travel, I like to have a backpack and a duffel bag. That's it, four pairs of underwear, hand wash your clothes daily, all right? And you wanna have $15,000 of cash, no more than that, because it's really hard to count that much money by hand, because if anything happens, that money can allow you to survive for up to six months while you figure things out. Importantly, you study historical figures, whether they're good guys like Martin Luther King, Gandhi, or bad guys like Hitler or Emmanuel Noriega, when things go wrong, if the government decides that you're a criminal or you're a political revolutionary, or how about this, you are getting your wages garnished for child support, or you get divorced and your ex-wife tries to have your assets seized, if your assets are in banks, it's easy for the government to get a hold of them and freeze them and stop you from accessing your own money or for the government to start taking your money. So when you have that $15,000 in cash, you know no matter what happens, you have money on hand. Further, you don't have to pay ATM fees in the cases where you actually need cash on hand. Think of the strange concept of paying $5, $8, $9 every time you wanna access your own money. It's bizarre. Further, consider the fact that the banks that are holding your money, they're taking your money and loaning it out to other individuals and charging interest, meaning they're making money from loaning out your money, which is why if you have a significant amount of money in the bank, say $50,000, if you ever show up at the bank and say, I want all of my money out today, they will pull out every stop, cause every issue to make it hard for you to get your money out in cash because they're actually using your money for something. You should use your own money to profit yourself. So that's number one, keep at least $15,000 in cash so that if you ever have to make a move, you can do so. Number two, I like to keep some amount of money in cryptocurrency. There are two major cryptocurrencies, Ethereum and Bitcoin, that are fairly reliable. If you go to ethereumprice.org, you can see historical charts. In 2019, I think Ethereum crashed down to about $80. That's a great time to buy it. Regardless of whether you're buying it when it's low or you're buying it at an average price, generally speaking, the cryptocurrencies are moving up or remaining steady, which means that you're either going to make money in the long run, or if you don't make money, it's a great place to store your assets, store some capital where the government can't get their hands on it because the whole concept of cryptocurrency is that you are the bank, you control your own money. But my recommendation would be to get your hands on some cryptocurrency, some Bitcoin or Ethereum, buy it at a low cost when the market is crashing or on a downturn, and hold on to it and use it as appropriate. As I said, ethereumprice.org is a great website. You'll see that if you buy it. Oh, we have a guest. Um, I'm gonna hurry up and finish this up so I can turn these jets on. But the third place to store your money is to not store it. It's to put it to work. It's buy low, sell high, which is an ancient principle. For example, you know that I have a velvet slipper that I'm producing. Let's say that my Chinese manufacturer, their minimum, uh, their minimum order is 100 units. Each unit will cost about $30 for them to produce. It's a velvet slipper, so on retail, it's gonna sell for no less than $70. So more than twice the price of what I'm buying it for. I'm buying it low, I'm selling it high. Now, I have to buy 100 pairs of these shoes. They're $30 a pop, that's $3,000. If you want something to do with your money, say you gave me $500, I used your money to purchase a portion of the shoes. When the shoes are sold, I return you back $800. You've been able to be an investor in something that's simple and get some cash flow and some return on your money very quickly. I recommend you involve your money in simple businesses, simple investments that you understand. I don't recommend that you go into the stock market. With stock, you need higher amounts of money because the trading fees alone will eat away at your profits. Stock is generally a longer term investment unless you have a lot of money and then you can do day trading and make two or 3% a day. 
you know, and make a lot of money because you're investing a lot of money. But if you're an average person, you probably are not gonna do very well in the stock market unless you're leaving your money in there over a five year or more period. So that's number three. Invest your money in simple cash flow businesses that are buy low, sell high. You understand them and you trust the people you're working with. And the last place to store your money, you'll notice a lot of the things I'm pointing out are about protecting your money. Protecting money is just as important as earning money. So I say store your money in multiple banks, ideally banks that are abroad as well if you can. So, you know, a couple grand here, a couple grand there. I recommend the countries of, of Panama and of Switzerland because the banking laws are favorable for international folks. It's hard for foreign governments to go into those banks and seize your assets or freeze your assets, generally speaking, unless you're like El Chapo, right? <laughs> and also those countries are stable. They have low levels of fraud. It's easy to get in and get out of them. In the case of Panama, they can actually store your money in US dollars so you're not losing money on exchange rates. So have your money in foreign banks because it protects you from things like child support, things like divorce, things like wage garnishment, things like uh, government seizing your assets. And you know, it's just good to not have all of your eggs in one pot just in case that pot gets smashed to pieces. So folks, those are my four tips on places you can store your money for your good financial health. I appreciate you joining me. And as I always say, you are remarkable. You have greatness within you. And I encourage you to make sure that in every moment you are showing the greatest part of who you are.